Jean mentioned that I was with uh, Schwarzkopf. Have you ever heard of Schwarzkopf? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, if you have, you will know that it's a hair care company, and knowing that and seeing me, I do feel I owe you an explanation. <laughs> For your information, I had to test opposition products. <laughs> As a rescue uh, strategy, I've just stopped using hair conditioner in the mornings in the hope that I'll get split ends. <laughs> and it will then appear as if I've got double what I've got, but I don't know, I don't know if it's going to work or not. Anyway, it is a pleasure to be here. Gene also mentioned that Lees has written five books, and you could be forgiven for saying, well, has he? I've never heard of him. Well, I have. And, and, and there are the books on my favorite uh, topics of sales and service and management and so forth. And there's another book coming up soon called How to Be Happy Without Money. It's $120, and I do hope you'll get a copy of that. <laughs> These people want to be successful. We live in a society that demands that you and I be successful. Meaning what? Well, for a start, you must live in a home that exceeds your personal space requirements by at least sevenfold. <laughs> Otherwise, frankly, you're nothing. And throughout your life, you must strive to buy things you don't need, <laughs> with money you don't have, <laughs> to impress people you don't like. <laughs> the people at the bottom see themselves as victims and casualties in life and business, waiting for whatever it is that oppresses them to pass on by and leave them alone. <laughs> I want to get paid what I'm worth. <laughs> We're not allowed to pay less than the award. <laughs> and who was it that discovered you could get milk from a cow? <laughs> and what did he actually think he was doing at the time? <laughs> now the question is, why do they talk in this whining, whinging, moaning way? And I know a lot about this. I'm from Great Britain. We're world champions. <laughs> How can you tell when a plane load of palms have arrived at the airport? Simple, because when they turn off the engines, the whining is continuing. <laughs> By the way, originally, I'm from Manchester. I live here in Sydney, so on the one hand, I was delighted that we had the Olympics, but on the other hand, having come from Manchester, I was somewhat upset that Manchester did not win the Olympic bid. And to be honest, I'm still bitter about it, because I really do believe that the Olympics would have been far more exciting in Manchester <laughs> than they ever could be in here in Sydney. Please think about it. Here in Sydney, the games were over in two weeks. In Manchester, due to the weather, it could have gone on for a year. <laughs> you see what I mean? Economically, it would have been better because we could have had the Winter Olympics at the same time. I don't think that's ever happened before. The challenge to the athletes would have been greater. When have we ever seen a marathon run in overcuts? Surely the long jump would be more interesting if they landed in a puddle. And try to imagine the tension and the excitement of sitting in the Olympic Stadium in Manchester while the javelin's being thrown in thick fog. <laughs> and everybody has problems. The only people who don't have problems are dead people. Well, they've gone on to a better life. So if you've got problems, it's a sign of life. I'm so alive at the moment, I can hardly take it anymore. <laughs> when I arrived here tonight, I only live an hour away from here, but when I arrived here tonight, first thing I did is get on the phone and I said to my wife, I love you and I miss you, and I can't wait to have my arms around you. She said, who is this? <laughs> don't tell me you don't have relationship problems. We had an argument the other night that lasted for an hour and a half, but I'll tell you this, when it was over, she came to me on her hands and knees but I would not come out from under the bed. <laughs> well, at least I'm learning my lesson. We had an argument six months ago, and after it, I didn't even see her for four days. And then eventually, the sight came back in this eye. <laughs> it's normal. It's normal to have marital problems. One of my kids said to me once, Dad, I think everyone in the world hates me. I said, don't be silly. Not everyone's met you yet. <laughs> People sometimes say to me, well, what fears do you have in business? And I do have fears in business. I do, honestly, I do. But my great fear isn't business. My great fear, personally, I may be the only one in the room, my great fear is a man is getting to be really old. Really old. Now, 
When I talk about over, I'm talking about getting into your 80s and 90s and so forth and so on. My great fear as a man of getting to that ripe old age isn't losing hair and getting lines. I hate those things, but that's not my great fear. My fear as a man of getting really old is that I know that my trousers will continue to go higher all the days of my life. <laughs> this is my great fear. There's no question about it. There's nothing men can do about it. The higher the trousers go, it's a sign of age. But we must ask ourselves, why does this happen to a man? Does he arrive at a certain age where his body begins to collapse into his trousers? Does he get to a certain age where he cannot remember what size trousers he takes? This continues, you can get into your back pocket over your right shoulder. Then his tie that has known corporate freedom all his life will one day go straight down into his pants.